Hi everyone, here are some useful tips for reducing anxiety and stress during these uncertain times. These are particularly useful when you're feeling quite a high level of anxiety. So if you picture your anxiety on a scale from one to 10, when you're hitting around seven, between seven and a 10, that's when these skills are gonna be most useful to you. They can provide instant relief, but usually it's pretty short lived. So we suggest either using several in succession or pairing this with kind of more long term solutions that are going to reduce your anxiety over the long term. For example, better sleep, more exercise, more connectedness with others. First up, we have what seems like a really basic technique, which is essentially submerging your face in cold water. So that involves leaning forward, placing your face in a bowl or a sink of cold water, holding your breath for approximately 30 seconds or more if you can tolerate it. And what this does is it activates the dive reflex in humans, which is basically an evolutionary response which has allowed humans to survive for longer if they fall into water. What happens is it reduces your heart rate and it allows the body to conserve energy. So this helps people survive longer in cold water and they've fallen in until help can get to them. What we want to do is take advantage of this and allow the body to reduce its own heart rate, to calm it down and essentially reduce physiological and emotional arousal. Next up is paced breathing and what I particularly like about this is that nobody knows that you're doing it, you can do it anywhere. It's simply lengthening the out breath to make it longer than the in breath and the reason that that works is because the inhalation is actually activating our fight and flight system. It's preparing our body to act by taking in oxygen. The exhalation activates the opposite system which is called the parasympathetic nervous system and this basically down regulates and soothes the fight or flight system. So what we want to be doing here is taking cycles of 12 seconds per breath. And that means taking an in-breath of five seconds, an out-breath for seven seconds, or an in-breath for four seconds, and out for eight seconds. By making our cycles 12 seconds long, it brings our breathing rate down to about five breaths per minute. So usually we're somewhere at 12 to 18 per minute. So it's a drastic reduction. And what it does is it activates the parasympathetic system, which is the soothing system, which is the one that's gonna reduce our bodily anxiety. The next tip is mindfulness, and mindfulness has become somewhat of a buzzword over the last few years, so many of you are probably familiar with it. But there's quite a lot of science behind why and how this actually works. The idea of mindfulness is to purposefully pay attention to something in a non-judgmental way. So that basically means observing without trying to find um, interpretations or meaning making from what we're observing. That allows us to stay directly in the present. The majority of anxiety is relating to thoughts and worries from the past or the future. So this is a great way to stay in the present and where we don't have access to those worries and thoughts. The other way that this is really effective is by developing this, if you think of it as a muscle, it's like doing reps like you would in the gym for your biceps. This is like muscle reps for your brain to allow you to develop control over your mind, what you pay attention to and what thoughts and emotions you have. I particularly love doing this in an informal way. So it means that for people where it's difficult to find space and time to sit down and have a formal mindfulness practice, you can bring this into anywhere in your daily life. Take, for example, dishwashing. So as you're washing those dishes, you'd be focused on what kind of movements your hands are making, what sensations you're experiencing in your hands. For example, can you feel the suds on your skin? Do you notice a change in pressure as you start wiping the dish? Is there a scent that's coming from the washing up liquid? You can do this in almost any scenario. For example, walking, you can notice the sensations of your feet as they touch and come into contact with the floor. And these are really good ways to use mindfulness to stay in the present and to develop some control over our thoughts. So the final tip is to use your brain in a way that requires mental effort. If you can imagine in a very oversimplified way that our brain is made up of two parts. The one side is the cognitive part that deals with all the, the reason and logic and the other part is the emotion part. When one or other of those sides is activated, the other one can not also be activated. So what that means is, for example, when you're particularly emotionally heightened, you're probably not thinking so clearly. It actually interrupts cognitive processing. The opposite is also true. Also true. When you're very involved with reason and logic, it's very difficult to actually feel your emotions. So what we recommend here is to use your brain in a way where it's actually effortful. So for example, counting down from 100 to 1 using increments of 3 or 7, or if you're particularly math oriented, you could use a more difficult number like 3.6 or 4.7, whatever's going to really make you have to think. I particularly like counting numbers and letters sequentially. So. 1A to B. And as you get further and further down the line, it actually becomes something that you really have to focus on. What that does is, again, it allows us a nice break from focusing on our emotions or our anxiety that we are feeling.
Some of these tips and techniques will bring immediate relief for some of you, but unfortunately it's not going to be long lasting. Ultimately, we want to be living a life where the incidence of anxiety is reduced so that we don't need to resort to using these skills as often. Some ways to do that in isolation, which may be different to if you're not in isolation, are the following. Firstly, make sure you're getting alone time, especially for people who are sharing a living space. And if that means bringing a book into the bathroom, then that means bringing a book into the bathroom. Second, engaging in pleasurable activities every day. There's a lot of research out there that shows that if you engage in pleasurable activities, it increases positive emotion and reduces negative emotion over time. For example, anxiety. In isolation, we can still do this. We can still find activities that are pleasurable. For me, it might be taking a long hot bath. For you, it might be reading a chapter of a book. For another person, it might be taking a scoop of ice cream. These are unprecedented times. So the expectations that we have for ourselves and the standards that we set may not be practical anymore. We may not be as productive in the way that we were before. We may not be able to have the quality time with people as we did before. So essentially, we just have to accept that things are slightly different now. Everybody's in the same boat and go easy on ourselves.